Okay, so this video is on the subject of trigonometry. Now, it's probably more suitable for people who feel completely lost in trigonometry, and you just want to find out what are the basics of trigonometry, and how can I use them to solve most problems in trigonometry. So I'm going to show you how to identify the three most common types of problems, and to be able to decide what method you're going to use to solve each of these individual problems. So first thing to note is that trigonometry, uh, as far as junior search students are concerned, deals mainly with right angle triangles. Now it, it doesn't only deal with right angle triangles, but as I say, that for the junior search, all you're really concerned about is right angle triangles. So these three uh, problems that I've drawn out here are basically the, the most common types of problems. So the first one here, where you're given two sides and you're asked to find the third side. For this one, we would use Pythagoras' theorem. Pythagoras' theorem states that the square of the length of the hypotenuse, in other words, this line here, is equal to the sum of the squares of the lengths of the other two sides. So in this situation, x squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. And if you're not sure what the hypotenuse is, it's the longest side in the triangle and also the side directly opposite the right angle triangle. So that's the one that has to be on its own and it's equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So you end up with an equation here and you can simply solve that equation to find out what x is. So that's the first type of problem. I'll show you an example of solving that in, in just a moment. Now I'm going to talk about the other two types of problems. So the second type of problem that you can get is where you're given an angle and a side and you're asked to find another side. So again you're given two items of, of information and you're trying to find a third item but this time it's the angle and the side that you're given. So for this what we need to use is sine, cos and tan. So you have to be familiar with um, how to use sine, cos and tan. So to be able to do this, you need to know what uh, different sides of a right angle triangle are called. For example, this side here would be the opposite if we're using this angle, So because it's opposite this angle. So this is the opposite. As we explained before, this is the hypotenuse, it's the longest side, and the, re the, the remaining side is then called the adjacent. Now, for example, if you wanted to find what the sine of 40 degrees is, well, you could look it up in your calculator, but you should also know that the sine of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that's a simple fraction, and it's basically a ratio of the two sides, the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if you want to find cos of 40 degrees, well, that's the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so this guy over this guy. And finally, the tan, the tan of 40 degrees would be the opposite over the adjacent. Now, if you find it difficult to remember what sine, cos, and tan are equal to, um, I'm sure your teacher has taught you some way of memorizing that. Uh, one I prefer to use is a simple word called socatua. So just in case you haven't guessed, sine, SOH stands for sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, CAH stands for cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and TOA stands for tan equals opposite over adjacent. So they all sound a bit like equations, and that's exactly what we need to find out what the value of x is. Anytime you're asked to find the value of x in a, in a question, uh, that invariably means you need to find an equation so that you can solve that equation and find out what x is. So we can find out what equation we need by using one of these three options here. And I'll explain more about how to do that in, in the coming uh, minutes. But First of all, I want to talk briefly about the last type of question here. So this question here, in this case, we're given two sides, so kind of a bit like this one, but instead of looking for a third side, we're looking for an angle. So this is a second type of problem that we're, where we can use the SOCATOA. Now what you're going to see is that the method for solving this is almost identical to the method for solving this. So really, there's only kind of two basic types of procedures uh, for, for to solve all of these problems. One is the 
Pythagoras' theorem, and one is using one of these equations from Sokator. So, next thing I'm going to do now is uh, complete the solving of the first problem here. So we've, all, we've already found out that the uh, square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So x squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. Um, if we work out the squares, we get 9 plus 16 here. So x squared equals 9 plus 16, which is x squared equals 25. And to find out what x is actually equal to, all we have to do is square root both sides. So square root of x squared gives you x. And the square root of 25 will give you 5. Now bear in mind, the variable is not always the one that's isolated on its own here. For example, if you had a situation like this, actually the hypotenuse here is 5, so that's the one that you put on its own. 5 squared equals x squared plus 4 squared. A lot of people make the mistake thinking that the variable is always the one that's on its own. Uh, no, it's always the hypotenuse. Whatever the hypotenuse is, in this case, it's 5. So just to repeat, to recognize if you have to use Pythagoras' theorem, you need to have been given two sides and to be looking for a third side. So looking back at our three diagrams here, um, if we can discount the fact that it's definitely not Pythagoras' theorem, it has to be either one of these guys. And as I said, you basically use the same method to solve both of these. So uh, in other words, we use Sokatoa. So I'm going to show you how to solve this one here now. Now here's the key tip I can give you for solving these problems. You should label the sides that you're given in the question. So he here we're given this side, so that's the opposite and this side is the hypotenuse. So we have something on these lines, label those lines, ignore the one that's empty. So what this tells us is that what we're interested in is opposite over hypotenuse, which corresponds to so, in other words, sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. So that's what's going to give us our equation, in other words, the sine of the angle, it's always the sine of the angle, equals 4 over x, the opposite over hypotenuse. Now remember that sine 40 degrees is only a number, so we can look that up in our calculator, look it up in your calculator, and you get 0.6428. Now you probably got a slightly longer number than that in your calculator, but I just rounded that up to four decimal places. Now the next thing we need to do is get, get this x away from here, because Generally speaking, if we have an equation with fractions in it, the first thing we want to do is get rid of the fraction. So that x here is dividing into 4 over here. So I'm going to use the, the rule uh, that if you take something across the equal to sign, you always do the opposite of what it was doing on the other side. So here it's dividing. So when I bring it over here, I'm going to multiply. Now, in the end of the day, we want to find out what x is. So we really don't want this number here. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring this over to this side. Now that 0.6428 is, is multiplying by x, so over here it's going to be dividing into 4. So basically, if you have a number next to an x value at the end of solving an, an equation, that number that's next to the x value goes below the number on the other side of the equation. So it goes from here to here. In other words, it's doing the opposite, it's dividing as opposed to multiplying, which it was here. So we end up with an answer x equals 6.223. Now, um, just to check if that answer makes sense, I look at the diagram and I, I see that this is 4, so and this is somewhat longer than 4, so yes, 6.223 makes sense. So that looks like it's the right answer. So just to summarize what we did here, um, first of all, we label the two sides that we were given something on. We ignore this guy. Uh, that, that told us that we're looking for opposite over hypotenuse. So which, which one is that? Is it sine, cos, or tan? Well, we see from, from Sokatoa that it must be sine. Sine equals opposite over hypotenuse. That, in turn, gives us an equation. So sine of the angle, 40 degrees, equals opposite over hypotenuse, which is 4 over x. 
And from there, we could basically solve the equation, find out what x is. So um, that's the second type of problem. And you're going to see that the next one is uh, solved in a pretty similar way. Now, if you remember, in the question we've just solved, we got an answer for x here of 6.223. So now let's have a look at the third type of problem. Let's assume that this, the length of this is 6.223. Uh, the length of this is 4, just like it was here. So you would expect um, the angle A here to be roughly 40 degrees. So the question is, how do we find out what that angle A is? So again, we're going to use Sokatoa to help us solve this. First thing we do is we, we label the two sides that we're given just like we did here. So this would be the opposite and this would be the hypotenuse. It's the opposite because it's opposite the angle A. So again, A here is just a variable. So if we want to find the value of a variable, uh, as usual we end up having to find an equation and once we get that equation, we can solve the equation and find out what the value of the variable is. So, we've got to use Sokatoa. And we know that the two sides in question are opposite over hypotenuse. So that must be sine. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So if that's true, then sine A must be equal to 4 over 6.223. Now, of course, we're not interested in getting the value of sine A. We want to find the value of A. So what we have to do is bring the sine across the equal to sign. So here's what happens when you do that. So when you bring the sine across the equal to sign, it changes to sine minus 1. And that, that, that might also be called the sine inverse. That allows us then to find out what the angle A is. The angle A is a certain amount of degrees, and you can find that out by keying this into your calculator. Now if you're not sure how to key sine minus 1 into your calculator, um, you can ask a friend or your teacher, but basically in most calculators you, you press the shift key or the second F key before you press sine and, and then follow that by keying in the, the number that you're actually trying to get the sine inverse of. So once that's done, you'll find out that the angle is actually 40 degrees or some number very close to 40. So to summarize these two uh, problems, we basically started them off the same way. We labeled the two sides that we, we were given. So in this case, we labeled these two sides. We said it was opposite over hypotenuse. So we used sine equals opposite over hypotenuse to make up our equation. We solved the equation and we found out what x was. Likewise here, we labeled again the two sides that were given. We ignored the empty side. And then from that we could see that it's the equation we need is sine. Sine of a equals 4 over 6.223. Again, that's just an equation. We went ahead and solved it. Uh, remembering that when you bring sine across the equal to sine, it turns into sine minus 1. And that's an important point to realize. You'll only ever use the sine inverse or the cos or tan inverse when you're trying to find the value of an angle. Now, in the three examples that we've looked at so far, we've always had at least two items of information within the triangle that we were dealing with. Now, in this particular problem, you can see there's only one item of information within that triangle. So, it seems like we can't solve this one. We, it, it looks like we need at least two item, type, items of information to solve these kind of problems using trigonometry. Um, now, in fact, we can solve this, and, and I'm going to explain that right now. This angle up here is called the angle of depression. In a, in a typical question, you might have somebody, say, standing on top of a hill, and they're looking down at a boat, let's say the boat is the letter A, and you're told that the angle of depression for the letter A is 40 degrees. So the angle of depression really means the, the angle between the line of sight to the boat and looking straight ahead. So this angle here is 40 degrees. 
Now, the interesting thing about this is that this angle here is an alternate angle to this one here. So if you know your geometry, uh, this line is a transversal line because it's going across two parallel lines. This line here would be parallel to the, the line of the sea here, sea level. So if they're parallel, and this is a transversal cutting across two parallel lines, then we know from geometry that the alternate angles are equal. So this angle here has to be equal to this one. So therefore we can say that this angle here must be 40 degrees as well. So that's a handy thing to know. This angle here is actually called the angle of elevation and this angle here is the angle of depression. But they're always equal to each other. So um, from that we can say now we have two items of information and we can go ahead and solve this using SOCATO. I'm not going to show you how to do that now because I've already shown you how to do this in the previous examples. But I just wanted to alert you to this um, th this possibility that you might be getting an, a an angle of depression and you need to convert that or you need to be realize that that's equal to the angle of elevation down here. So that's all I'm going to say on the topic of trigonometry um, for the time being. As, as I said, it's not a comprehensive treatment of trigonometry. It's just enough to be able for you to be able to realize or recognize the different type of problems that you may get and show you how to deal with those problems. So this should be help you solve at least 60-70% of the problems that you come across.